Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Hannah Olson and I live in Minnesota with my husband and our three children. I love posting about motherhood, homemaking, and homeschooling here on Instagram and also over on my blog. Today's video is about the topic of homeschooling and I wanted to share with you how we set things up and organize things here in our small apartment. This is a two bed, two bath apartment. Due to my husband's job, we live in two locations as a family throughout every year, so that's a little background on that. We have a house that we own, but then we also have this apartment that we live at for about half of the year. And I homeschool, so we can easily, we can be flexible with our homeschool schedule. But I do want to keep it very minimal. As much as I can, I want to keep things simplified. We are also a book-loving family, and I would say we have a pretty book-heavy approach to homeschooling. So I've also had to come up with good systems for which books we bring up to the apartment and which ones stay two hours away at home at our house. And and kind of how we organize that too. So I'm excited to just show you how it's looked here because we have been homeschooling for I think several years at this apartment here and I feel like we have a really good system and a good setup that's easy to maintain and is pretty minimal. So I hope you enjoy seeing a little peek into what our homeschool setup looks like in an apartment where we keep it pretty simple. For me, there are several main elements of homeschool organization, and of course this will change and fluctuate as my kids get older, but I would say if you are planning out your homeschool setup, I would recommend having a place to keep picture books or chapter books, um, the ones you'll be pulling from throughout the year, and then a place to keep course books where your students or your children, I used to be a teacher, where the students um, can pull out the materials they need. A place for you to have teacher supplies, that can be pretty simple. And then also art supplies, like an art cart or something. And also manipulatives or those more bulky games, puzzles, or just larger supplies. And since this video is about apartment homeschool or minimal homeschool setup, you know that we do not, or you could guess that we do not have a homeschool room. We don't have a particular room in our home set aside for homeschool. It's not our school room. And that has worked perfectly fine for us. I would not stress out about having a certain homeschool room in your place. For us, we've gravitated towards doing school in our living room mostly and some in the kitchen. And this is true for both our apartment here and our house, um, doing school in the living room and in the kitchen. So you can definitely just find a place that's the heart of the home. Maybe you need to be easily accessible for some of your kids' independent work, but you'll be working in the kitchen, something like that. It's easy to do it in the living room or in the kitchen. So please do not stress out about having the perfect Pinterest worthy setup. For us here in the living room, I will show you in just a second. We have a big bookcase. Actually, we have two big bookcases. One has a lot of my husband's and my books on it, but the lower half of it has our school stuff. And then the other bookcase, which you can kind of see over here to the side, has some more of my husband's books and some of our office supplies up high. And then down low, we have some of our grab and go activities and other little arts and crafts stuff like paper. And so that's got not as much homeschool stuff. I will show you both though so you can kind of get a feel for how we split categories apart and how we organize everything in our living room. Okay, like I said, we have a two bed, two bath apartment and this is just kind of what the living room looks like when you first walk in off to the left here. I will get into more of the bookshelf you can kind of peek at on the right there, but first we're gonna pretend we turned left in the living room. Okay, this is the first bookcase you see when we head into the living room and uh, the upper half of this bookcase, I'm not gonna show you all of them, but we've got my husband's books and office supplies. I wanted to focus on homeschool topics for today, of course. So we'll talk about what's here first. I'll give you a quick look into what is in here, but I actually have a whole separate video about what is in here. So on this shelf, we've got a little bin of manipulatives. I've got a 10 frame in here and a wreck and wreck. So I'll pull that out. It's just, they're kind of noisy. So I wanted to tell you first and then I'll pull them out to show you. There's a cute little wooden 10 frame. It actually comes with acorns for the kids to pull out the number card and to count out in the 10 frame. And we have a wreck and wreck, which is kind of, I don't want to call it an abacus necessarily because I'm not fully educated on an abacus and using those, but this is a great way for kids to slide a little beads back and forth to practice counting and other work with numbers. I used to have dice stored in a bag here, but uh, due to a precious three-year-old boy I know <laughs> who liked to dump them out every day, I now keep dice actually up high, which I will also point out in a little bit. We've got our magnetic letters here. 
We actually just used these this morning and I have not organized them in a little while because this is a realistic look at our homeschool setup. I am not going to make everything absolutely perfect, but I'm showing you exactly where things are and it is a really manageable system actually. This is where I'm keeping more of the bulky items for our school time and it's also some other just fun things like puzzles. I don't only say those are for school. We've got an Eboo brand game. This is called What's Going On Here. It's about inferencing. We have an alphabet puzzle Soren got for his birthday. We've got uh, farm animals, like simple puzzles. We've got Mighty Mind here. We have the magnetic version. It's a really fun way to work with shapes. If you've heard of tangrams, it's kind of like all those little shapes that you can put together and make other shapes. <laughs> this is a little game we have from the good and the beautiful. And we've got a nice math card game. It's got like 16 games in one or something like that. So this has been a fun one for us. I do plan on using it more as the years go on. Then we keep puzzles over here. Just a couple of those. I think they're Melissa and Doug. Uh, no, Mud Puppy. Mud Puppy brand pouch puzzles, which Soren really likes. We've got Sophie's Whisper Phone. This is for her to practice reading independently. And this is a game, I can't remember what it's called. It has a unique name, but I'll link it below. Um, it's got all sorts of picture cards. So as you can see, it's not a ton of manipulatives and stuff. I try to keep it pretty minimal here at the apartment. We do have more at home, but we also have a little bit more room at home. We don't have a very large house though, if that helps you kind of to imagine what it's like. We don't, it's not like I'm only bringing bare bones stuff here and then we have tons and tons of stuff at home in some spacious room. We have a pretty modest sized home, which actually allows us to keep things really consistent between the two spaces. Like I mentioned, I have a whole video about what's in here. And this is our grab and go activities mostly. Our grab and go activities are for things like church and waiting rooms. And we just have a lot of different activities in our life where I might want to grab something for the kids to do, or now that they're a little bit older, they get to pick, you know, I tell Soren to pick one or two toys or one sticker book and one toy. Um, if we're heading out the door to watch his sister's dance class, anything like that. These are even great for restaurants. So I will, I'm not going to link or talk through all of this stuff in this video, but I definitely encourage you to check out my other video about all of our grab and go activities. I have so enjoyed having this space and like having this strategy for when we have somewhere we need to be. But I guess related to homeschool, we've also got um, some paper that the kids are allowed to use. Sometimes they use old letterheads from my husband's work that, you know, got misprinted or something like that. Right now it's printer paper, some construction paper. Sophie's got some tracing stuff under here and some of our extra large coloring books. So it's not really a homeschool area, but I just wanted to show you. Also, something to show you real quick. I still am not super satisfied with where I'm keeping this, but we have a huge roll of this, I guess it's called butcher paper, just the brown paper roll, and you can spread it out over an entire kitchen table and have the kids color on it or write or draw on it. It's really fun, and since we have a, a rectangle-shaped table here, it fits better here than at home, so we have a circle table at home, so I decided to bring this up to the apartment. Okay, I'm kind of crouched down behind our couch here in the living room, and this is just our book bin or book box, I guess, that comes with us when we go for the rest of the year back home, which is two hours away, we load up this box itself. I actually like to use this to store our Christmas books. If you've seen my children's Christmas books video, I love storing Christmas books on display here. It's just really a fun way for us to see all the cute titles and front covers. This is just kind of general reference books. I guess some of our um, science books I like to keep here, like Slow Down, just some other favorites like our animal friends at Maple Hill Farm, Soren's beloved food and farming book, and our Sing a Song of Seasons book, which is a big one. It's a good treasury full of poems. So yeah, just I recommend sometimes if you've got the room, having a book box or a way to display books with the covers out because it really invites you to pick up those books as a family more. All right, over here towards our deck window, I don't open the door to our little deck out there. We are on the second and third floors of this apartment building. We have our little art table, we call it, and this is something I found on Facebook Marketplace. It is a Pottery Barn kids table and they're usually really expensive. So this one's well loved and it has worked so well. We actually have the exact same one also found on Facebook Marketplace. 
um, at our house two hours away. So I don't haul the table back and forth throughout the year. I wouldn't say we do a lot of schoolwork at the table, but the kids love doing art projects at the table and even sometimes having breakfast at the table. I also have Sophie's hundreds chart and a little letter printout page right here. She's always doing crafts about animals or things that need labels. And so this just brings her a little extra confidence in her letter formation. Something that comes with us between the apartment and our home, so something we use all year, is this little art cart. And it's a narrow one and not too tall, but it has worked perfectly for us. I will link it below because we've really loved it. Okay, I'm gonna show you what's in our art cart. Let me position it the way I'm used to seeing it. We keep it this way to the left of the art table even at home so it's really easy for the kids to always know where things are that helps to actually to kind of replicate our systems and our yeah our or organization between the two locations so here we've got just a little container from walmart or target that i had found and it fits perfectly for several pairs of kids scissors i feel like we're always losing kids scissors so we do have more scissors than children <laughs> or children who use scissors at this point we've got a couple nice pencil sharpeners several of those by now, and some little erasers. Here's a stray crayon. We've got pencils in our mason glass jar. You can tell we're getting towards the end of the school year because things are not as sharp or not as plentiful as they were before, but I have it on my shopping list for next fall to really pick up more things like this, so I don't really want to right now. We've got our, these are erasable colored pencils, which has been helpful for us. Then this is from the Target dollar section, I think. It's a really cute little wooden bin. I don't know if these are called like a fruit box or something. It's really cute. It's where I dump all of our crayons. We also have a bag of crayons. These are more of various skin color crayons. So I would say the top rung of our art cart is used the most. Then looking down here to the next layer or level of this three-tiered cart, we've got our painting supplies mostly. I keep all of our painting supplies, isn't this lovely, um, in a gallon Ziploc bag. As you can see, these are well loved from lots of use this year. I like to buy fresh watercolors for the kids every year and um, that's what I did this year. They've just been used a lot. And then also in that bag I keep our paint brushes. We have a whole variety of those. We also have a little bag of whiteboard markers and a tissue that's used to erase with, so it's just easy to grab and go if our schoolwork requires a little whiteboard. And here is our favorite kind of watercolor paper. It's nice and thick, very absorbent, so I pick up this every so often. Um, it's more expensive, so we definitely try not to go through tons of it every, every day or every time we watercolor, or paint, sorry, but we really love this kind of paper. And then here on the bottom tier of this cart is Play-Doh stuff, only Play-Doh. So we've got tools, just a variety of tools and an older Play-Doh container, little bag. And then this one is something I got at a garage sale. It's just a bunch of letter or other stamps and little cookie, cookie cutter things. The kids love to pretend they're making cookies, so that's why I called it that. And then we've got a whole variety of Play-Doh. Every so often I do pick up a couple new ones because it's pretty cheap, but these are our good ones that we currently have. All right, here's our coffee table. We have a nice, long, large coffee table here at the apartment. And usually this is where I set out whatever read aloud books we've been working on. Lately, we've been loving these Jerry Pilata books. They are, they're all alphabet books, but really cleverly written and super interesting about all sorts of topics, as you can see. We've got birds, construction, all sorts of things. So these, or whatever our latest interests are, I leave out on the coffee table. And if we're doing something seasonal, like starting to read a bunch of our spring books, I will lay out all the spring books here, or I'll have the spring books in that book box I showed you. This coffee table also becomes kind of a dumping ground as we are sitting on the couch here. Then we just end up putting all of our course books and stuff here. So this gets cleaned up every day and we're done with school for today. It's quiet time now for the kids, so I have it tidied up. Okay, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a lot of pictures of Soren, our son, sitting in this chair all set up to do his independent work during the day. Um, he loves sitting in that chair so much, and he usually is there while I'm working with Sophie over on the couch. This is also where I sit to nurse Svea, which is a lot of times every day, and I am trying to read more than scroll social media, so that's why you see my books there. Something else I wanted to show you 
to the right of the kids' art table, besides where we keep Svea's car seat, we've got our little desks. These are kind of lap desks or um, table trays. I'll show you how it looks set up, but this is just where we keep them vertically stored against the wall. We also have a couple clipboards over here. Okay, here's how it looks set up. It's got great legs that fold up underneath. This is great for doing work on the floor as well as on a couch or on a chair, even in bed if need be. So we've really enjoyed having a couple of these around. Okay, up on top of our other bookcase here in the living room are three soft bins and our security camera, but I have not organized these much lately. So again, this is a realistic, real life look at our stuff. This is our craft stuff up here though. So this is where I pop things that I don't want the kids reaching for all the time, like a glue bottle, stuff like that. Here we've got to the left of the art table, where the art cart usually is, our big sturdy bookshelf and the lower half of it is full of homeschool stuff. This is probably our main homeschool area in the apartment. So down on the bottom shelf, we were able to fit our printer perfectly. So I love having that tucked away. We can pull it out if we ever need to like scan things or make copies, but for the most part, it's perfect right there. Then we've got Sophie's readers here. We've got the reading for all learners and some half pint books readers. We've also got one that came with her Good and the Beautiful curriculum. Then over here, we have all sorts of Usborne books. We love Usborne books, which I think it's now called Paper Pie. These books are full of really great science facts and history facts. We've got history right here. You can see Vikings, Egyptians, castles. And then over here, we've got our science, weather, astronomy, all sorts of those topics. These are really fun to pull from and read for science for school too. We only take up one, two, three shelves in this bookcase over here, but this second shelf up, I'll show you kind of the general categories we've got and how they're organized. To the left here, we've got our Bible or faith related books. We've actually got our children's Bibles here. We have a couple other theology questions books, even like little baby board books about God. And this one is about hymns. We've got our Truth and Grace memory book, which is like a young child's catechism, God's names, so devotional type stuff. These are some read aloud options. I do have way more read aloud books stored at our house. I did not bring them all to the apartment. So these are some that we have read or are starting to read this year. We actually have done a lot more Magic Treehouse books because my husband has read over 20 of those books with my kids this year, which is so fun. So that's been actually a primary read aloud time for us instead of all of these, but we'll continue to work our way through those. Then we've got art books here, like the Come Look With Me art books. Those are great and really fun to pull out and discuss together. Then we've got some fun treasuries like James Harriet, who is my all-time favorite author for adults, but he also wrote children's books. We've got our Eloise Wilkin stories, which you can see some of these have sunlight curriculum labels for various um, ages, and that's just because I bought them in the past and we continue to use them. We do a combination of different curriculums and course books in our family. We've got Brambley Hedge, and then I kind of transition over here to ones I can pull out and do with Soren, especially kind of preschool level books. So we've got a good tracing one, A is for Apple, lots of good Dr. Seuss books like 10 Apples Up on Top, Hop on Pop. Then moving on, we've got a section of winter books here, which I call them winter. It used to be, I wanted to do like a polar animals unit, which I'm not a huge unit person, but I, I can get on board with seasonal books for sure. And I love bringing those out. And it's just something you learn about yourself as you're, you become a homeschool parent and go through the years in real life with your kids, just whether or not you wanna do more crafts or more units, that kind of thing. But anyway, we've got winter books, and I included things about Arctic animals, polar creatures in our little winter section here. These would be books I would pull out and put on the coffee table if it's like the beginning of winter and we're excited about winter. I would say we're more excited about spring. You can see we've got a larger spring books section right here. These are the other ones that I have actually shared on my on Instagram, but also on my blog. I have a whole blog post all about our favorite spring books. So definitely check that out. I will link the blog post below for you. All sorts of fun spring books here. 
And then over here we've got a simple Hobby Lobby basket, which I found just fits coloring books really well. We've also got some of those books that teach you how to draw various things. The kids don't reach for this all the time because they have other things that they've been reaching for recently, but I just like having this close to the art table. Okay, then this final or third shelf of this large bookcase is for our actual curriculum books or course books that we've been working through all year. The kids do this at home too. They know they have a bin that we can pull out or I can just pull out when I'm planning for the day. I grab it and put it out on the table or something. But this is Sophie's bin and this is Soren's bin. Okay, let's look over here to the left first. This white binder is where I have my weekly lesson plans and other work samples that I'm keeping, ideas I'm keeping for the future, although I have whole spreadsheets on my computer of that, and then also where I take attendance. Then we've got some of our family's combined subjects, although science is, you know, primarily picture books and reference books, all sorts of things. Right now we also have this um, Science for Little Hearts and Hands. I actually have an entire video about Science for Little Hearts and Hands. This is a curriculum put out by The Good and the Beautiful for young children to start delving into science topics, so definitely check out that video. We finished our health, safety, and manners book, which the kids totally loved. That is another combined subject. I mean, this is, I don't know, it says one, but we did it with both Sophie and Soren, who are in pre-K and preschool. I've also got a great phonics book here. It's called Systematic Sequential Phonics. I've used this as a teacher, as a student teacher, like years ago. Really, really great program. So we use that with those magnetic letters I showed you earlier. We've got a whiteboard here to go with those whiteboard markers I showed you in the art cart. And then I made a folder of our Meet the Orchestra unit from Squilt. If you haven't heard of Squilt, it's a really great music program, I guess I, you could say. It's a whole website full of resources and um, there are lots of things you could either purchase or they have a membership program too. We just have this Meet the Orchestra unit, which has flashcards. I've got a whole file folder or whatever this is called, folio, of Title I games. These are games that I used when I was a Title I teacher, many of which I found myself and loved doing with students when I did small group math and reading interventions. So definitely kept that. We've got another phonics activity right here. A couple other cute counting or preschool file folder games that I wanted the kids to have. This isn't as cute because it's all fallen over right now, but we've got more of those games. And then tucked inside here is a logic game, logic set. This is what I was trying to show you. This is a logic activity pack for young children. It's really, really fun. And I recommend checking this out at Teachers Pay Teachers. This is Sophie's math box, we call it. It is um, a box of manipulatives that came with her level K math curriculum from the good and the beautiful. If we peek at Sophie's bin a little bit here, I got these rose gold bins at Walmart actually, and they fit a lot of course books pretty well. These are little highlighters that Sophie can use to follow along with words as she's reading. We've got her language arts course book, her level K math book, some readers. We've got pre-K geography back there. These are just some readers we've been working on and some booster cards. I even have some extra worksheets and stuff like telling time and other things on a clipboard back here that we can grab as extra independent work for her. So the stuff we grab every day is here as well as a lot of these books. If we look over here at Soren's bin, we've got his name puzzle, which is pretty much his, the letters of his name cut apart for him to work on, uh, just knowing how to spell his name. I love doing that with kids, it's so fun. We've got his Mathematical Reasoning Beginning 2 book. He just recently finished uh, Beginning 1, which was for age 3, and this one says age 4 at the top, so he's really excited and proud about that. I'll just put these off to the side. He's got his preschool course book, which we started more recently, like a little ways into the year, and his pre-writing, handwriting book. We've got some extra worksheets here and some independent work as well. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple setup overall, but everything has its own home, a place where it belongs, and that makes everything a lot more easy to maintain and manage, and the kids can even help put things away, like Soren the other night was helping to put away those Usborn books, or they know to put their uh, course books back in their own bins, so it works out really well for our family.
Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful to you to get a realistic look at our homeschool setup. It's pretty minimal, I would say, despite all of the books involved. It's very feasible and manageable for us, easy to maintain. So I hope maybe it brought you some inspiration or gave you some ideas about how you might organize your own homeschool setup. If you're looking for more videos about homeschooling, definitely check out the other videos. I think I have a homeschool playlist on my channel, but if not, you'll be able to easily see which ones are about homeschooling schooling. It's been so fun to share this with you. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you're at and I'll see you guys in my next one. Mm -hmm.